Hello, hello, and welcome back to every family dinner you've ever seen in a movie or on television as I continue my assault on the alien homeworld in Perfidious Pete Plays XCOM 2. And yeah, there's a real August Osage County kind of vibe brewing here on this mission so far. Family patriarch John Lennon the Thin Man keeps making racist comments about humans or pieces of garbage that are only good for being duped into doing his bidding much to the outrage of the younger, more idealistic, vastly drunker Bradford, and of course they're bickering like an old married couple. And the whole time they argue, the angelus ethereals hovering in the background like a codependent grandmother carrying a still warm pie, offering everybody a slice of delicious blackberry goodness, and telling them that everything that's happened has all been for their own, you know, humanity's own good. The only thing really that's missing is a table set with a good tablecloth in China. That's, that's really all we would need to complete the ensemble. And also, Grandma, I'm not buying your shit, by the way. The whole you only hurt humans because you love them thing? Hogwash. Your effort to convince me that all this has been some sort of test to prove humanity worthy? Yeah, you know, I didn't, didn't buy that argument way back in Sunday school, and I'm not about to buy it now, Grandma. Honestly, the sad thing is, despite being completely shit-faced, I think Bradford's got the best, most compelling argument. I guess the aliens probably should have paid a little more attention in debate club and spent less time dropping their pencil trying to sneak a peek up little Susie Jenkins' skirt. But, you know, we've got a little skirt peeking of our own to do. There is, I think, another pod of aliens over in this sector, and if there is, I would like to eradicate them before we continue. I don't want anybody... Pulling any backdoor shenanigans, just like little Susie clear? Jenkins wouldn't let you get away with any backdoor shenanigans after debate club. Overwatch. So we're going to advance this direction and just make sure that our backfield is fully clear and swept before we move further forward. To Did get Jake Busey's cover blown by Dizzy. I'm still real salty about the fact that Jake is no longer concealed because I opened Got a it. door. Moving. And yeah, it was my own fault and yeah, it was a stupid decision, but I'm still salty. I can be salty about my own stupidity. Honestly, that's the thing I'm most often salty about, is the fact that I'm an idiot. Life is hard when you're dumb. It's tough. Ten four. Smart people, you, you smart folks out there, you're like, hey, you know, life isn't really that hard, Pete. Yeah, well, you know, try being as dumb as me. When you're as dumb as me, I assure you, life is more difficult than you would expect. So that just leaves Casper the Ghost Van Deen here playing a little catch-up. Yeah, very Uma Thurman of you with the catch-up reference. Yeah, it's oh, good. Catch-up. Uh, that was a, you know, yeah, that, that, the joke is terrible, but that was actually a pretty well-written scene. Not a huge, uh, not, not really a huge fan of the, uh, not really a huge fan of Pulp Fiction. I mean, I, I think it's an alright film, and, uh, I, I don't have anything against Quentin Tarantino. I think he's a pretty solid director. I think maybe, maybe Pulp Fiction gets a little more credit Scanning. than it's due, simply because it was sort of novel at the time and kind of it was more it was more groundbreaking, which in and of itself I guess is is a reason to be worthy of praise. I but still, maybe Pulp Fiction isn't quite as good as uh, everyone reveres it to be. But still, you got to give him credit for writing in the Uma Thurman joke because that actually was a pretty solid little bit of character move, building. Move, move. Probably one of the best written scenes in that movie actually was the it. Uma Thurman tells the joke. Don't know if these big green tubes are explosive or not. Gonna err on the side of them being explosive. And also, maybe there aren't any more aliens over here. I mean, we've already eradicated. There was a giant pod over here. It was like two mutons, four robots, and a sectopod. I'm concerned there may be something similar over in this region. When in doubt, you know, uh, when in doubt, not a problem. keep the pin and the grenade. If you don't know where the foe is, hang on to the grenade. That's exactly what we're gonna do here is just play it cautious. Make sure the area is clear. We're doing a little sweep and clear. Sweep and clear. On to such a hut. Johnny Rico would call that. I mean, he was captain of the team, you guys. Never forget, Johnny Rico captained the team. The team. Also, Johnny Rico's a pretty good candidate for those scouting moves because of his ever vigilant ability. All right, aliens, you got anything at all? No. Oh, oh, oh Grandma with her pie. Oh, is that a fact, Grandma? Mm -hmm. Try some delicious blueberry goodness and choke down my rage along with a slice of your pie? I think not. I'm not buying your shit, Grandma. So you spread out like locusts to consume others to maintain your fucking predatory instincts? Basically, you're like bacteria then, huh? 
Uh, well, I mean, it doesn't really make me want to not exterminate you. Humans do real bad shit to bacteria all the time, Aegilus Ethereal. Trying that as your argument isn't, uh, isn't really going to help you out. I mean, we murder bacteria by the trillions on a daily basis. Think about that, too. Humans basically, I mean, we're, we're, uh, we're a genocidal lot. The aliens should keep that in mind, too. Just think about all the awful shit we do to stuff like bacteria. No problem, We've butchered the shit out of them. They deserved it, but still, I mean, the, the aliens not really making a case. Be like, oh, we're hard. like bacteria. Be like, yeah, you've seen what we do to them. Why, why would you think we would treat you any different or better? What's over there? Angelus Ethereal. What's over there, Seth Gilliam? I mean, ideally nothing. Scanning. This entire area seems completely devoid of all life. I'm also really, order. really hesitant to be moving forward. I'm very glad we don't have a mission timer on this, or I'd probably wander into something monumentally stupid. So what's the... There's a door over here. This goes on a ways. I mean, these little side wing areas are huge. This is a lot of unused map. So I'm guessing we have to go through this door. Is that even in the center? Uh, there, well, okay, there's another door over here. So this is sort of the middle. I'm, I'm, I'm using, like, my sort of analytic chops to try and figure out were I a level designer, how would I have designed and where would I have placed the next encounter. Also, Dizzy leapt through a window so hard she caused some structural damage to the interior of the building. That's going to yeah, that's gonna cost a pretty penny to fix that shit, Dizzy. You didn't need Mike Holmes on Holmes to patch that up. This is where Mike would come in and talk about how the aliens used a cheap contractor and the base Throw wasn't built up to code and now there's fucking structural weaknesses in all the walls and now he's going to have to tear all of it down and replace it. Got it. Don't do shoddy worksmanship when Mike Holmes is on the job because he'll fucking take you down. I'm all set. Seth Gilliam. All right, there, this, this whole area seems clear. I mean, we're not even getting, like, a tiny inkling of any enemy resistance. Commander, resistance forces are pushing back against Advent, but it's coming at a heavy price. At this rate, there may not be anything left on either side. Yeah, well, you know, uh, we'll be here, Bradford. It's fine. Uh-huh. Oh, just have a piece of pie, Pete. Everything will be fine. You got to admit, your father's got a point. Those humans are really kind of pieces of shit. Let's all just agree to disagree and everybody have a nice slice of my cobbler. Moving to position. You slice cobbler? Cobbler doesn't really seem like sliceable to me. All right, well, what do we got? Four mutons? Is that it? Yep, four mutons. Here they come. We are in, arguably, a sort of terrible position to deal with four mutons because the rest of the team is very, very far away. On the plus side, though, we got this guy, the commander's avatar. Uh, he could come up here and, I think, pretty much just wreck all of their shit, right? What's your chances to mind control a guy? 100%. Well, I mean, that's pretty good. Do we want to use that ability? What if it doesn't have a cooldown? What if we use it and it's just gone? I mean, all of our other abilities have a cooldown, so... Why would this one be any different? Do I really want to waste it on a muton? What, what if we just throw a dimensional rift? We know this has a cooldown, because we already used it. Well, yeah, well, let's just do this, then. So, we're going to have the commander's avatar just... These guys are going to get shat all upon. And wrecked. One of them is just straight up dead. Two of them are very desperately injured. Jake Busey could come up here and kill another one pretty much at will. That puts him a little close to the danger zone, though. I don't know if he'd be caught in the dimensional rift, and I should very much prefer that he not be caught in the dimensional rift. Right, NPH, if we bring you up here, what can you do? Can you even see a guy? You can't even see anybody. All right, you're way too far away. It may be up to Dizzy. Dizzy, what can you do? Oh, I, you know what? A kill zone here would be a thing of beauty. 31% with lightning hands is terrible. But a kill zone... What, let's, okay, so, like, as an instance, let's say we drop a kill zone here, right? These guys either stay where they're at and get absolutely butchered when the thing detonates and they're all dead, or they move and Dizzy brutally guns every single one of them down. I very much like that. So I think we're just going to have Jake Busey one fall more. back here. I don't really see any benefit towards moving forward. And we'll put Neil Patrick Harris on Overwatch just as a little extra insurance. 
And I think Seth Gilliam, likewise, is going to advance and maybe go on Overwatch for just, again, a little extra insurance here. He has a shot. We could... You know what we're going to do instead? We're going to suppress. Seth Gilliam, I want you to suppress that guy. This way, we've got your Overwatch. If he moves, he's going to get riggedy rig wrecked like that. We might have Amy Smart come forward and try a little suppression as well, assuming she can see a different target. If not, she'll probably just go to Overwatch. She can see a different target. All right, so we're going to suppress not you, but then you. So the two aliens that are visible are both suppressed and in a death zone. So, they, yeah, this is this is not going well for Team Muton. When they had their little Friday Night Lights pregame ramp-up speech, they, uh, you know, the coach was not expecting this. He's like, oh, man, I didn't, I didn't think that XCOM would just pin us down in the zone of doom and just leave us there to die. I thought they'd show a little more, you know, niceness. These guys are really brutal sons of bitches. They're cutthroat. What are you going to do, Muton? Take a shot with a huge aim penalty, huh? Okay. Amy Smart was missed. I'd like to think mostly because of said aim penalty. Guess this guy's probably going to do the same thing. Also taking a shot with a huge aim penalty. Except Dizzy is going to pick him off? I mean, she shot at him but did not hit. Or is that guy on the move? He is not on the move. Shooting at Amy Smart with a huge aim penalty. All right, so I'm guessing somebody else is going to come up and try to take a poke at Amy Smart. You're getting shot at by Dizzy, because Killzone damn well better activate. Okay. This was our plan all along. Suppress the enemies in our zone of terror. Ah, nice work, Diz. Seth Gilliam splattering bullets uselessly across the entire field. And this guy comes over here to suppress, and uh, never mind. I mean, he's suppressing, but only for about a third of a second. Because our dimensional rift just shattered the entire world. Wow, that really made a mess. So yeah, the old graphics card chugging a little bit there. That's a lot of particles to have to render. Mm -hmm. Come on back. All are welcome. Yeah, okay. We got a real Zelda from... What was that lady's name? I always want to say Zelda Fitzgerald, but it's not it. That, that's the name of F. Scott Fitzgerald's wife. But there was the actress. Her first name was Zelda. She was in Poltergeist, and also she played the piano in uh, 16 Candles. Zelda something. But the graphics card really did chug a little bit there with the massive particle explosion of what our Dimensional Rift did. And good sweet goddamn, Dimensional Rift just completely eradicates all cover. Once it detonates, forget about it. It's, it's real good. Also, it looks like our avatar is still somehow... Okay, he was showing up with the suppression icon. Even though that made no sense. That ability has a three-turn cooldown, too. That just seems absurd to me. You're talking about the fucking potted plants, Brad, there, Tygen. Where, you know, Bradford's talking about how humanity's getting slowly eradicated by the aliens' push. Angelus Ethereal's telling us about how it's all for our own good and that deep down Jesus loves us all. And meanwhile, Dr. Tygen's like, hey, man, look at those plants. They, uh, they grow real good in, like, areas of psychic, uh, psychic phenomenon. That's, uh, you know, it's interesting, I guess. Is it clear? You, uh, you like botany, right, Pete? That's, uh, that's sort of your hobby? You're like a, a hobby botanist? I'm like, no, actually, Tygen, I don't, I don't really give much of a shit about botany at all. The only kind of plants I like are the ones that are tasty. And Tygen's like, oh, well, I'm you know, going. maybe grab one, and when you bring it home, we'll throw it in a pot, chop it up, and... Well, you know, we'll see how it soups. Can we can we make a good uh, can we make like a good soup base out of that? Is it is it sort of like the alien equivalent of celery? Sure thing. We're just gonna have Dizzy advance. Dizzy not gonna Overwatch. We're gonna have her drop a reload. Little disappointed, by the way, Dizzy, in your uh, kill zone Let's effort there. That was uh, the least impressive you've been so far on this mission, and you have been impressive too. Don't think I'm trying to take anything away from Dizzy. She has been top shelf. She's been absolutely fantastic. In our initial encounter with those robots, she fucking ruined some lives. Hearing reports of some randomized disruptions in enemy forces on the ground. Mm -hmm. Units suddenly laying down their arms mid-battle or turning on one another. With the tower disrupted, it could be that the elders are attempting to maintain the network on their own. The strain on them must be enormous. Oh, well. Yeah. Oh, here's Grandma. She's like, now, now, you too. And now the dynamic has shifted because suddenly Tygen is in the argument and John Lennon Thin Man is no longer interjecting at all. 
It's like Tygen and Bradford have ganged up on Dad. Oh, never mind. Here he comes with his racist hate speech. So many friends, so many allies. You know, aliens. I'm gonna, I'm gonna point something out, and it's actually something I only noticed the other day and found kind of personally hilarious. The only one of our allies that we have actually lost on this playthrough, the only XCOM trooper to, that, that that legitimately died, the only one who actually got killed. And granted, we've had a lot of people who got wounded, so he has a point with the suffering thing. But the only, the only trooper who got killed was a rookie, and uh, I, I think it's worth noting that that rookie, Casper Van Dien, killed her. The, the only the only trooper we've actually lost What's over there? for good, permanently, put in the ground, six feet under. The only person who was killed during all of this action, Jasper Van Dien killed her. On your order. It's not really going to look too good on your performance record at the end of the campaign, by the way, Johnny Rico. If the only casualty suffered by Rico's Roughnecks was you executing a turncoat, son of a bitch. Or, you know what, now that I think about it, maybe it, maybe it says really well for Rico. He's like, yeah, I ran a tight ship. Discipline is Absolutely. fucking top shelf. There's nothing better. Our discipline is, is fantastic. Everything now. works perfectly all the time, and Johnny Rico brokes no traitors. You mess up in Johnny Rico's crew, Rico's Roughnecks, Johnny Rico eliminates you. This is why we have ironclad discipline, because they know what will happen if they fuck up. Johnny Rico will murder their entire world. I think we're just going to put you on Overwatch, little avatar guy. And if we can, I'll repeat the exact same strategy that I used last time on every single pod. We'll just, we'll slow play this. Until it's all dimensional rifts and people pinned down under a huge hail of overwatch and suppression in a dimensional rift. Be like, you can move and die or you can stay put and die, I leave it to you. Uh huh. Oh, we ask you to come and invade us, okay. Sure. Again, I'm not I'm sorry, Space Jesus, but I'm not buying your I'm not buying your shit here. We hurt you because we love you, just like when uh, the world was drowned in that Titanic flood in the Bible. I'm not I'm not buying your shit, Angel Ethereal. Preach into an empty seat here. Just just give it up, Space Jesus. It's all over. Yeah, I'm fine. It's good, Bradford. I'm not going to stop. Space Jesus is not convincing me. You're bringing oh, me, the commander? Wait, now who is this? <sighs> All right, so yeah, now now the argument's getting real weird. It's it's becoming very schizophrenic. We got Bradford, we got Tygen, we got Daddy John Lennon, the Thin Man. Then we got some other ethereal who's getting in a... Oh, fuck, okay, so that's a lot of faces. And some berserkers. All right, well, that's a whole lot of alien coming at us real fast. Man, that's a lot of health we're going to have to do. We're going to need a vast amount of damage. That was a very unfortunate pod activation there, Jake. All right, we're going to need... Please tell me we have okay, the whole team. Uh, we don't have Dimensional Rift queued up. That's bad. All right, well... We're really in a pickle. This might be the moment. We can absolutely mind control a Berserker. All right, let's hope this isn't a once per game thing. I don't think it will be. So far, every single one of the commander's abilities has been repeat use. So we're going to take one of those Berserkers, make him our little friend. Thank you. Welcome to Bitch Town, population you, bro. And then we need to kill this Faceless and probably that Faceless. And that, ugh, we need to kill a lot of shit. We don't necessarily have all of the tools we might like. Okay, I don't want to use your mind control because your domination actually is a one-time thing. So, you get one shot. To not miss your chance and blow this opportunity, blah, 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 once in a lifetime, etc., etc. So what's... You know, all of these units, it occurs to me, we don't, we don't have to give a shit about cover here. Every single one of these units is a melee unit. We don't need cover at all. We also probably don't need a chain shot to kill that guy. Nine damage. How much health have you got? You have ten. So a minimum damage hit there does not kill you. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and call that a bad thing. But we do have Dizzy for mop-up. Dizzy, you have serial active? You do. You do. So we can use Dizzy for mopping up the mess. 
Casper Van Dien, what can you do? With a little luck, you could kill that guy, and then we could have a chain shot go at a more threatening enemy. I sort of like this plan. Let's take this. Brilliant work, Rico. Nice fucking miss, you jerk ass. Okay, that's very bad. And now the problem is, is we need to be extraordinarily far away from everything. So, Neil Patrick Harris, can you give me a, a Void Rift? How far can you throw this? I'd really prefer to not hit my own guy with the Void Rift. That's the problem. Can't even throw it far enough to hit those guys. They're so far back. Can you do something that'll give us enough guaranteed damage? What? Okay, wait a minute. What if we insanity that faces? It can't fail. It does some damage. Would a soul fire just straight up kill him, though? Not necessarily. The minimum damage on soul fire is not, not a guaranteed kill. If we null Lance, how far can we throw it? Can I hit this other berserker? It's just long enough to only get the faceless. All of these things suck. So Seth Gilliam, you only have one shot, and I don't really want you closer to the enemy anyway. Let's just have you finish this. Oh, wait a minute. We could Saturation Fire. This is better. Is it going to catch? Uh, I don't want to catch our... F there we go. That's what we're looking for. Give me that. Hit them all. This is going to burn a lot of ammo, but this is what we brought the auto loaders for. Nice shooting. Okay, we got this guy may freak out because the last time we fought a berserker, as soon as it took damage, it wigged the shit out, and then it spent the rest of its turn punching its own dudes in the fucking face, which admittedly was quite nice. Why is the screen shaking? I mean, that, that's actually kind of nausea-inducing. What did we do that caused that? So Amy Smart has one shot at a bad guy. Uh, no. Not, not that guy. Shoot a bad guy. Do I want to chain shot this guy? It takes so much ammo. You know what? Just to, Okay, your minimum damage will kill him. Let's just do this. I trust Amy Smart. That's going to put acid on him, which is why Amy Smart's minimum damage is going to be enough. That guy will die from poison on his turn. He's got one health. We have nothing to worry about there. Neil Patrick Harris, there is literally nothing for you to do here, is there, pal? That's not necessarily a bad thing. Dizzy has a sniper. Sh that shooting at that guy is pointless because he's already dead. He just doesn't know it. You know what? Let's just put Dizzy on Overwatch. Come get some. Jake Busey, I need you to just get the hell out of Dodge, actually. We're going to have you fall back. I don't want any of our team even close or even theoretically within charge distance of any of those enemies even on a double move in fact i'm so concerned about that i'm going to inspire jake busey to, to fall further back we have nothing to fear but fear itself as well as this rampaging horde of out of control berserkers and uh, possibly several faceless who are lurking about the map in the potentially dangerous positions Actually, now that I think about it, we have quite a bit to fear, other than fear itself. So perhaps we should concern ourselves with the things that we need to fear. I lost my... Uh, that guy is dead. I poisoned that man. He died. That, that poison was fatal damage. He had one health left. How is he not dead? Okay, a little salty here. Solid damage from Dizzy. Eight is, well, I say solid. It's it's reasonable. That guy's probably going to punch his buddy. Oh, he's enraged suddenly. What does that make him do? He's real angry. He's going to take another move. What are you doing then? Okay, I ain't going to come up here and punch this guy. Every, all right, so this is a big old gangbang right here. This guy took a swing at his own dude and missed. That's not overly smart. Man, okay, the mind control there was definitely a good decision. You guys are all going to cluster up right into... Yeah, right into my fuck box. Oh, welcome to the fuck box, gentlemen. Well, let's see what a berserker can do. We still have a mind control, right? Yep. You have devastating blow. They have literally one power, and it's punch a dude. This guy's injured enough. I don't think we need to bother wasting time punching him. Let's punch the other Berserker. 
Seven damage. Has a chance to stun the target, which I think that it knocked him out. Berserker is unconscious. So our Berserker punched the Berserker and knocked him the fuck out. That's hysterically awesome. I I like that a very great deal. That That's real good. That's real good. All right, Neil Patrick Harris, we're going to bring right, you forward. I think we're going to have you go ahead and... T this, this combat has actually suddenly become kind of comical to me. So what if we do you with the Void Rift? Because again, this ability can be used more than once. Do we even need to do it, though? Maybe we just have enough damage with bullets and shit. Ah, uh, you know what? We'll be fine. Let, let's let's hit the let's hit the pod. Yeah, I know my own friendly well, berserker is in that. I'm not that worried about friendly berserker. He's gonna take damage from the void rift for one thing. And the rest of my plans for the turn also involve him being shit all over. So it's gonna be fine. It only showed damage on... Oh, there we go. Okay, there's the rest of the damage. Killed one faceless, one faceless badly injured. What's Papa Santa Claus got in his bag of presents? Neil Patrick, what do you got for me, baby? All right, so panicked and a little extra damage. We got some insanity. Our panicked faceless is now ruptured. What do you got for our other little muton friend? He's mind-controlled, so both of the berserkers left on the map work for us now. Okay, so I got one. And then he immediately got ruptured, died, and went flying ass over tea kettle to the other side of the planet leaving us with exactly one mind controlled thin man and a very frightened faceless who's running the shit away at best available speed it, I mean, that's, that's pretty top quality work right there Seth Gilliam Amy Smart can shoot our captive berserker you know what that's, that's probably actually the better let's just do this I don't want him getting loose and coming to mess with us. So let's just go ahead and wreck him. He's also now poisoned. What are you doing? He's enraged. This might break his mind control. Can't can't really tell. Actually, wait. Is the, oh, the unconscious berserker... Is there any chance that guy gets back up? I don't really understand how unconsciousness works for enemies. Can we shoot him is also an important it's question. Can we shoot the down berserker? No, we can shoot the friendly berserker. The unconscious berserker cannot be shot. We're gonna kill you. And down you go. We're just mopping up the trash here. We still got that guy who's just lying on the floor like an asshole. Uh, Jake, you see? I think we'll just put you on Overwatch. I'm on it. I would really love for somebody to be able to get a shot at that, that faceless that was running away, but eventually his panic is going to come. I mean, he'll get unpanicked. Eventually, he's going to get his shit together. Commander's avatar? I, I, I think we're just going to have you fall back and go on Overwatch as well. I don't know what this unconscious berserker is going to do. In the event that he wakes up, I want people ready to kill him. We can't shoot at him. On Overwatch. He should take some damage from this. Faceless is still panicked. It healed. Ah, that's why the other one didn't die. So they heal before they take damage. And that's exactly what I was worried about. That guy is now back on his feet. So he got knocked out, but only for one turn. Now he's back up and ready to work. I don't I don't really know if it's going to do him a whole lot of good. Also, why can't Seth Gilliam shoot at that guy then? Amy Smart also can't shoot at him. Why not? He's just, he's just standing there like a dick. All right, this is a potential bug that I am not a huge fan of. I think we may have to saturate. I, I don't trust the. All right, let's see if this I does anything. Me. We may have to hit him with AOE effects, but I'm not going to leave that guy. That did absolutely nothing. So that maybe is just a bug. To Overwatch. The rest of the team's going to Overwatch. I want to see if that guy gets an action. To Overwatch. It keeps flipping to him like it can do something. But he's unconscious, so it can't. Here comes our faceless friend. Man, I don't know how unconsciousness works, and now I'm very concerned I may have inadvertently bugged the mission. What if we drop... Like, no, because we hit it with an AoE attack, actually. I was thinking, what if we threw a grenade at him, but... I'm not sure a grenade's going to do anything. Oh, okay, let's try this. Let's see if a Null Lance does anything. My lance pierces all. We're just testing stuff out. I don't trust this. Yeah, I did nothing. Nope. 
Okay, so that guy's un uh, it's got to be the fact that he's standing is just some sort of bug. For all intents and purposes, I'm guessing that unit counts as dead. So let's reload, restock. Man, I really hope this did not bug the mission. I'll be real salty if it did. We're going to have everybody reload, get back in it, and I think this is where we're going to wrap things up. We had not a huge number of pods and not a not a large number of pods encountered, but we're already getting a little lengthy, and I don't I don't want to have to go exploring and find another pod. I'm also still really worried about this particular berserker just springing to life and punching somebody in the face. See, it keeps bumping to him in the alien activity phase, which is what has me worried. Let you know what? Let's play this out for just a second. Let's take another couple turns and move forward. We'll try to move forward in such a fashion as to not pop a pod, but I would really feel a lot more comfortable if we could just have somebody shoot that piece of shit. Is the fact that it's just standing there. Now, it does have unconscious on it. I'm assuming that's what the little red down arrow is. If anybody's going to get shot or punched, I don't want that somebody to be Neil Patrick Harris. My concern is he's going to get re consciousnated and come back to his feet and then punch one of our guys that we need. Like, what if Dizzy gets knocked out? Or what if Jake Busey gets knocked the fuck out? We do have a med kit, but we don't have revive. So if somebody got knocked out by a bullshit berserker that, by the way, should just straight out be dead, because we should have killed him with AoE damage. At this point, that guy should be straight up dead. Moving to position. We hit that tile with enough stuff to overwatch kill him. We hit it with a saturation fire, which if he was hittable would have killed him or at least done some damage and then we also threw a null lance at that tile which again would also have killed him I'm tempted to actually just drop another void rift or something on that tile and see if that'll do it we could drop a dimensional rift there is it worth a cool you know what is my peace of mind worth a cooldown? that's what this boils down to and I think the answer is yes. If I drop a dimensional rift on that tile, let it explode and it kills nothing. See, that's exactly what I was worried about. Now this guy's doing stuff again. Nope, now he, he fell down. So what he did was get up and fall down. We still can't shoot at him. Oh, I'm, I don't like this at all. Is that ability recharged yet? Yes. You know what? Fine. Just drop a dimensional rift here. The only drawback to this is we're going to have literally zero cover as we advance through this next zone. This is dimensional rift is going to annihilate it. That guy took... Took no damage. Also, the fact that you can dimensional rift and still get another action is just fucking broken amazing. Let's see if this does anything to this guy. He's still trying to do things. No damage. Overwatch. Come get some. We've also got a minimum of conversation Overwatch. going on here from Bradford, which, I, you know what, honestly, I'm, uh, I like having a little quiet time for me, Perfidious Pete. All right, well, this guy is, I mean, he's not doing anything. So for whatever reason, he when he got knocked out by the Berserker, that took him completely out of the fight. So I'm gonna count him as a non-entity and hope that that did not bug the mission. And also hope that throwing that dimensional rift at effectively nothing for no reason didn't completely pork us. And it's also where I'm going to wrap this episode up. If you enjoyed it, feel free to drop a like down in the comment section. Of course, your support does really mean a lot to us. And if you'd like to see more family bickering, a la Thanksgiving dinner style, you might consider subscribing as well. Post new episodes of XCOM 2 every single day. Right now, however, I'm going to go get a slice of Grandma's Blackberry Cobbler because say what you want about uh, her passive-aggressive codependent tendencies. Grandma does make a mean fucking Blackberry Cobbler. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.